How you doing? This is Mike from Mike's Random Thoughts. So this is just a show update, more or less a uh, OTT or off the top. So as y'all seen in my last live stream, um, I actually got sick for a minute and that put me down for a minute. Um, it wasn't that severe. It was just, um, I would say the body aches is probably the worst thing for me and just the constant thirst of uh, wanting to drink water. But other than that, like I'm pretty much bounced back. And um, during that time, I did a, you know some thinking and stuff naturally because what else are you gonna do? I'm just basically on the couch whenever I can be. I did try to go to work uh, when I finally felt like I could. Um, and that was interesting. Let me just say that another little another little side note, guys. If you ever get sick, don't ever do it at the same time as your wife um, because it didn't matter if. When a body ache started, because she was hurting too. Uh, the fact that she was sick, no matter what I had, she had too. So it's definitely added to the factor that it wasn't fun at all. But now that I'm back, um, let me just say, whenever I do see people live streaming, I do plan on jumping on some panels here and there whenever I can. Um, granted, if the kids are like, you know, asleep or if I have some uh, time to be able to. Uh, that's my biggest dilemma with that issue, but I do uh, plan on trying to jump on some panels and On that note, I have been praying for Dirty Water Jones. He's a good friend of mine um, I'm not gonna put his medical information out there, but uh, from what I understand he's been in the hospital I do know what's going on. So I've been praying for him and uh, Dirty Water if you see this I'm hoping that you're at least doing better or out of the hospital or something um, I know I'm looking forward to seeing whenever you're um, live again. And that goes for Karen too, so yeah, which is his wife. But at any rate, um, as far as um, upcoming projects and stuff like that, the last series I did on human trafficking and uh, Save the Children kind of project I did, that took a lot of uh, time to actually put together those uh, clips to compile like mini documentaries and uh, took a long time to actually be able to do that but I am already planning on quite another large project um, this one's gonna be something I've been talking about doing for a while um, you know me I'm gonna end up dropping some trailers and some teasers and some hints on my blogs and uh, flyers and things like that when it gets closer to time to announce what it's gonna be about um, however, it's going to be the first time I'm going to be working on two things at the same time um, because I'm going to be writing this one out with more or less instead of an episode idea. I'll just put it like that. I'm going to be writing this one out for a total different reason. Um, but a while back before I got sick, right, I went to the prison to visit my um, to visit my father-in-law. And um, for those of you don't know that don't know, I did an episode on his case, which is uh, the case of Jeffrey Davis. It's pretty a uh, while back. You'd have to go back to see it. It's still on this channel. And that's because his case is part of the innocence program. He's from uh, the northern Tulsa, Oklahoma area. But anyways, when I went up to go visit him, I started thinking about it, uh, you know, during the course of the time and everything. And uh, I wrote this article a while back. And, you know, a lot of people often ask me with the things I've seen in the life that I've lived, those that do know um, some of the details about my life, how is it that I can maintain my faith in God knowing that this is going on or, or knowing this or that when there's so much that's they deem like, you know, going on that's chaotic and whatever it might be you know it makes them question god's existence all the time and i was thinking about this and the two events kind of like hit at the same time and um remember i said constantly thirsty from being sick but anyways and i started thinking that part of it with our faith is god's subtlety and whenever you start understanding the bo uh, the bible and you actually really understand the word of God. You understand that God, granted that he does do miracles and he is, he can do big things. He's also the master of subtle, like, you know, small details. So what are some of the daily blessings that us as a society 
take advantage of. I wrote an article that I actually called that, Reminder of God's Blessings, that we actually take advantage of. I'm just going to go ahead and read that article for you guys, okay? Hold on, let this... Uh, got a motorcycle going by. But anyway, so, wherever you are, do you realize how blessed you actually are? Look, you often hear about third world nations and um, as an example of seeing how blessed you are because uh, famines and different problems that's going on globally, and those are horrid. However, right now, there are people that wish they had a tiny fracture of half of what we actually complain about here in America, and they're actual American citizens. All right, so some of them are actually innocent. Some of them are actually guilty. However, I am willing to bet that you actually know someone who is actually incarcerated right now. I actually have family that are incarcerated uh, currently, and that's more than just my father-in-law. So, if you go outside, just for a minute, take a look around. And I want you to understand that no matter what your viewpoint is, whether that be city streets, woods, or the country, you're blessed because you're able to actually take a look around without a big fence and concrete barriers going around you. You can actually basically come as and go as you please. So often you hear people say, I hate this house. I hate this apartment, etc., etc." Yet many Americans right now, some that you're related to, are living in a three by four cell that are using a toilet that's open to the general public that people walking by. They would probably actually take a shoebox apartment, much less your actual place that you're actually living in. Just to be able to say that it was theirs, as well as just to have privacy, even if that privacy is just basic privacy. See, we take things God provides for us daily as blessings, yet we ignore them. This is due to God being the master of subtleties. In my humble opinion, that is. Yes, he will do grand things and miracles, but take a minute and realize the daily blessings that we actually have. Think about it. If you're a cannabis user, or if whatever you do, or if you don't do anything at all, you're a health nut. But however, we have the sunrise and we have the sunset. Every time that you look at it, it's like a giant paint canvas, right? Even cooler than that, it actually changes, meaning the color will actually change. Now, scientists understand weather, yeah, but yet they have not mastered the weather. And this is due to our creator being the one that created the, the universe and the weather. See, we have rivers, we have ponds, we have creeks, and we have the oceans. We have constant entertainment as well as a relaxation source. Just the ability to see one of those things without bars, fences, and guard towers, that would make grown men actually act like toddlers at a chance to experience that feeling just once again. See, we often complain about blessings, and it's a trip, I know. Yet it is true. Think about this one. Mowing our yard, for example. Many people would love a chance to actually do that, to feel the relaxation that it often brings. However, we overlook it. Just to be able to enjoy the smell of fresh cut grass afterwards. A lot of us overlook that too because we're hot, we're tired, and let's be honest, we just want to get we just want to get back into the house. All right, but anyways, moving on. Many people would love to experience a night's sleep on the couch, much less anything else. You know, because it is better than what they have been sleeping on. Again, privacy. This is a factor that is something that we take advantage of so often the freedom to basically wake up whenever we want to with the exception of having a job to go to see these kids that you wake up to their blessings too see the feeling of emptiness that's something that can slowly actually kill you physically and mentally it could also make you sick but we're not getting into that right now so yeah that would be a blessing to see 
to see the feeling of the oh so you had um those inmates would probably leap at a chance to be able to hear them playing even screaming and fighting simply because it is family a lot of them they don't have that and they have not experienced that for years at a time see we say that there's nothing to watch on tv and you hear us complaining about it often but imagine having to watch tv in a community room where you don't just get to flip the channel randomly through the channels as you please so yeah that little subtlety that's a blessing too see the car you complain about it is something that many can only dream about experiencing once again yeah even if it is partially broken and the speakers are all jacked up and you don't even know what the gauge is correctly saying even that little hoopty a lot of people would kill a chance to be able to ride in again so these are just small examples of god's blessings that he actually bestows on us daily yet so many of us actually fail to see them see life simply moves too fast so we forget to slow down and actually pay attention to it. Unfortunately, many people die without counting their blessings. And yet they spent their whole life chasing instead of enjoying life. They spent it in a fast lane. They never stop to realize how much they actually truly have. See, so never forget that you have loved ones that are locked up. Yeah, there are innocent people in there as well so remember to check up on them as well as you know as we live our life free a lot of them would love a chance to just experience a small portion of what we experience daily so just a phone call can be a huge deal to them daily mail that's huge to inmates i mean that's massive you would say i would actually wager that that's probably one of the biggest things you know Next to visiting them, that would be the biggest thing that you could actually do, especially if you're related to them. It not only helps them mentally, it also helps you mentally as well to actually remind you what you're living for, remind you to be grateful for what you have. So you got to understand something. A lot of people in there, man, they're in there for years and years and then they get in there. And because of prison politics, they end up doing whatever they got to do. And then they rack up more time. You know what I'm saying? And as that happens, a lot of these guys, they find, them, they find themselves starting to feel hopeless. And they find, you know what I mean? Like, what's the point in even trying anymore? I mean, because like, nobody's really reaching out to them no more. You know what I'm saying? So um, they start feeling that despair and loneliness. And that's what I meant by, you know, it can not only be beneficial to them mentally and physically, um, it could also be beneficial to yourself mentally because it reminds you of what you have. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that we experience daily that these people would kill for a chance to be able to experience again. Um, and that's something that actually hit me when I went to go visit them. You know, I'm just looking around and I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? Although I'm there visiting him and I'm talking, I'm also thinking and I'm just going, wow, you know, there's so many factors in life that we don't think about. You know what I'm saying? Like we able to just walk as we please. We don't got to take off our shoes and, you know, stretch out, get searched and do all that whole nine. You know what I'm saying? We just able to hop in a whip, bend the corner, go where we need to go. You know what I'm saying? And we don't think nothing of it. You get what I'm saying? Uh, the fact that you're able, when I said that you're able to watch TV, I mean, we're able to flip channels as we please. And a lot of us, yet we still complain about that, right? There's nothing on TV. There's nothing on TV. There's nothing on TV. I guarantee you there's something on there. The fact is, really, we just bored and want to complain about something. I swear is what it is. That's just my opinion um, of what I started realizing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's something that we just take advantage of. Um, we have the ability to cook what we want. You know what I'm saying? We don't got to depend on anybody else kind of thing. There's a lot of daily blessings that God bestows on us. And a lot of us don't give it credit. We don't give it much thought because, let's face it, it's expected, right? At least here in America or in the UK, Australia, it's expected. 
we just have this we just have this this factor about us to where it's just expected like what of it yeah we have working water and we have electricity and and we have a roof over our head and 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 you're able to make you know whatever you want to make and that becomes such a common factor that you don't think of that as a blessing because you think of that as oh well i pay bills so that's how that happens so you're not giving god credit and once you don't give god credit that's taken away from that blessing um <clears throat> that's what i realized i give god blessing and thankfulness for the blessings he bestows on me daily from the roof over my head to uh, electricity to food to to basic water to everything because i'm telling you you know there's a lot of people out there that don't have that there's even homeless people i didn't want to talk about i've talked about homeless people before because i've been homeless before in my life so I'm constantly stressing that factor out to not just my children, but to other people to be thankful for what they actually have. Because I remember that feeling of what it's like to have to lock yourself in a Taco Bell bathroom um, to bathe in what's commonly called a uh, hooker bath. Okay, and what that means is you're using uh, paper towels and uh, you know what I'm saying, the soap that they provide you. Uh, you know, everybody to wash their hands or they go use the restroom in the bathroom at a restaurant. Um, <clears throat> to clean yourself basically and to brush your teeth real quick and you know what i'm saying and do all that kind of stuff i've been there so that's something that i'm constantly um grateful for to be able to be clean to be able to take a shower i remember when i got off the streets that is something that i never forgot the feeling of being blessed for because when i was on the streets that was the one thing that i think i wanted more than anything was to be able to take a shower privately you get what I'm saying? Because you could go to the you could go to the uh, homeless shelters and and catch, you know, the community shower. You know what I'm saying? But that's the same thing as what I like what these inmates are going through, because you got like the community showers where everybody can take a shower at the same time. You get what I'm saying? Um, one of those type of situations. So just the fact that I'm able to take a shower in private or use the restroom in private, that's something I love because it's something that I longed for for so many years. And it's a daily blessing that I'm thankful for. Um, having clean water that you don't have to like, let it set there on the countertop and wait for it to actually fizzle down to be able to drink. And then try not to think about what was making it white in the first place before it fizzled down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's something to be thankful for. You know what I'm saying? You got it. And just listen to the birds. There's so many things out there. God shows you daily that you should be thankful for. But we're not. Because like I said, we find ways to justify to where we made it happen. You get what I'm saying? See, the problem with it is, so many times, us as man, we miss and true what flesh is. Part of flesh and living for flesh is not giving God credit is is you're taking god out of the factor okay um when you take god out of the factor that's going to only going to take away the blessing you're you're not even giving god credit for what god did you got to understand that everything that you do you should be giving god thankfulness for he's the reason why we're here you get what i'm saying uh, you really got to think about it from the aspect that we own everything. And I'm taking that to the cross aspect of uh, salvation whenever you get saved. Um, there's daily blessings that you'll start noticing in your life. And when you give God credit for it, you'll get more blessings. And I'm not saying it's going to be big blessings. I'm not saying it's going to be huge blessings. I'm not saying that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's going to be something grand and magnificent to where you're just going to go, hey, this has to be God. There's no other way. Now, don't get me wrong. That happens. And it's a beautiful thing when it happens. But more or less, in my experience, it's going to be something subtle. It's going to be like you're looking at your bills and you're juggling them around and you're trying to figure out how I'm going to keep the lights on but I'm going to feed the kids at the same time. Okay. And you're and as a parent, you're frustrated and you're going, what am I going to do? But you're not, you're not trying to show your kids that you're not trying to show your spouse that, you know what I'm saying? Um, and you're just sitting here like, what am I going to do? 
man, I could really use that 30 or 40 bucks I need, you know? And some time goes by, and then all of a sudden, one week, you manage to, all of a sudden, one week, you manage to get 20 bucks, or you manage to get 40 bucks. That's God. That's a subtle blessing. And that's what I'm saying. Um, or if you're like really hurting for cash that you don't want nobody to know it. And all of a sudden somebody's just being like, you know, like annoying assistance. Uh, hey, let me get that for you. You ain't even got to worry about the home. Well, let me get that for you. And it's kind of one of those things where you're like, nah, man, I got it. I got it, man. Get away from me. I got it. But man, for some reason, they just being assistant. Nah, man, I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? That's another example of a blessing. Um, or somebody just happens to get your back suddenly for some reason. That's another example of God bestowing a blessing on you. There's so many of them that we could point out that's just subtle and they're small. And those are the ones I've learned that we got to focus on to continue building upon our faith in them. Because otherwise, it's going to be get harder and harder and harder because the world's going to be pushing a narrative and a narrative and a narrative. And that's exactly what we're experiencing right now. There is a lot of hatred right now towards Christians going on. There is. I see it. Um, and honestly, I tell people often that when they ask me, how are you able to still have faith? I mean, don't you see all this stuff going on? And I'm like, yeah, but the thing is, is it was prophesied that it was supposed to happen. You get what I'm saying? Um, there's a saying, you can't stop a moving train. Do you get what I mean? Um, and it seems a lot of people want to stop a moving train in the sense of God. Um, and I've seen a lot of people are trying to play like they're God. And I'm talking about the scientific community now. Um, think about it. They're always talking about gene therapies and creating new species and bringing back extinct species. And you're just like, stop, just, <laughs> you get what I mean? But they're constantly, they're constantly going with it, man. They're constantly going with it. But like I said, to me, it's just stuff that, you know, they said it was supposed to happen. And as far as people hating on you um, for your faith, that's going to happen too. Um, in fact, Jesus himself, Yeshua himself, said, you will be hated just as I was hated. So that was prophesied in itself too. So this all boils down to how you look at it. But to me, this is supposed to be a short off the top episode. Uh, about just realizing God's subtle blessings that it bestows on you. And honestly, to me, that's what it really is. When I went to the prison, it was a great visit, but I started realizing just how many things we all take for granted. Uh, we're able to buy cigarettes. You're able to hit your e-cigarette. You're able to, if you're a medical cannabis user, user uh, you're able to use your medicine. Um, we're able to listen to the birds listen to whatever music you want get up without you know somebody telling you when you got to go take a pee when you're allowed to go take a shower when chow time is what you can eat where you can stand do you get what i'm saying you got you're free to make your own decisions man ain't that a blessing in itself i would say that's a blessing in itself that truly is a blessing in itself So this has been Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. This has just been a random off the top episode. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know, yes, I am back. I'm planning on jumping on panels too. Um, and yes, I have, I'm going to start. I can't say I have. I'm planning on starting at some point, uh, writing down the next one. Um, and it's going to be a good one in my opinion. And individually, I will be reaching out to people individually um, at different points in the writing of this one and whenever i do you'll find out why but anyways this has been for mike for mike's random thoughts i got to finish this honeydew list that my wife has for me i don't know if you ever hear um sometimes that their eyes are like daggers the door could be closed i could still feel her staring at me but anyways i've been married for over a decade you know it is what it is but anyways, Mike from Mike's Random Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes. Everybody have a great afternoon. Dirty water, I hope that you pulled through. Let me know whenever you make it through. Somebody let me know if, um, if he's doing better. 
Um, Mike, peace, love, and good vibes. I'm out.